All right, Mama, it is mid-October, and from here on out through the rest of the year, it always feels like a race, right? And moms particularly feel the pressure, whether it is from others or, you know, if it's self-inflicted. I am in the latter camp. My calendar is filled with stuff every weekend because, frankly, I enjoy it. But I do lose steam real quick as well, which is why I think it's important to take a moment, pause, and take a look at our spiritual disciplines. Having regular time with God is going to help us prioritize what we should or should not be doing, what we should or should not be taking on, especially this time of year. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then, you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Everything means everything. It's not just those big concerns, those huge rocks that are really causing a lot of stress in your life. It's also the little stuff, the everyday stuff. What would it look like if you talked to God like your girlfriend? Hey God, the weekend's coming up and I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? That could be a form of prayer, right? And as you are praying about everything, the Lord will guide you towards decisions that are going to be life-giving and that are going to bring you peace. And perhaps that means being okay with letting go of some of the holiday demands and all of its activities. That's what we see from Romans 8, 6, which says, Letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to peace and life. Listen, it is so, so, so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. I don't know if that comparison thing is worse as a teenager or as a mom, (laughs) but it can get pretty crazy out there. And if you get caught up in chasing all those things, in trying to be the perfect mom, to have the perfect house, to have the perfect kids, the perfect marriage, you are never ever going to win and you will lose your joy either bit by bit or completely. So that's why we need to bring God into our daily lives. Galatians 6.27 says, So I say, Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Now, I think we all realize that. We've probably heard that a lot from many, many people, if not even this podcast. The big question is how? How do we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our lives, not just on Sundays, but every single day? Because a lot goes on from Monday through Saturday. So that's why we need to develop daily spiritual disciplines. And I'll tell you where to start. A lot of the mamas I've spoken with about this, they get up early and they spend that alone time with the Lord before their family gets up. I think that's amazing. But sometimes, oftentimes, it's really hard for me to get up. I just have never been a morning person. So if you aren't either or, you know, you need, just need a little bit of help setting that discipline in your life, here are a couple tips. Tie your spiritual discipline, whether that is talking with God, reading, or, or listening to the Bible, tie that to an existing routine. That could be while you're making coffee, uh, while you're making meals, while you're exercising, driving, carpool with the kids. As busy mamas, we need to make every minute count. So if you're having trouble finding that dedicated time to read the Bible or, you know, pray to God, find the mundane tasks in your day that don't require a lot of brain power and use that to grow your faith and your relationship with the Lord. Tip number two is to write that 
spiritual discipline, whatever that is, reading the Bible, listening to the Bible, praying, write it in your schedule and then set an alarm for it. We've got a lot of things going on in our day. And while God time might be at the top of our list, sometimes we're going to get caught up in everything else that's going on and we're going to forget. So write it in your planner, write it in your phone, and set that alarm. My third tip is to strive for focused intention. When you're spending time with God or you are reading the Bible, it could be 30 minutes, it could be 10 seconds. That is 100% of where your focus is. And it's going to be hard. It's really, really hard for me because I constantly get distracted. Things fly into my mind like, oh, it's school picture day tomorrow. What are the kids going to wear? How am I going to do my daughter's hair? Or another one, oh no, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? Do I have the meat defrosted already? I mean, there are constant distractions vying for our attention, not only when we're spending time with the Lord, but with everything, right? Right. But I want to share this quote with you by Tony Miltenberger. He said, If I'm not dedicated to my disciplines, I'll be destroyed by my distractions. If I'm not dedicated to my disciplines, I'll be destroyed by my distractions. Distractions can add up, right? A few minutes here, a few minutes there. Oh, let me go take the meat out of the freezer so it defrosts in time. That takes one minute. Oh, the washer's done. Let me go take the clothes and move it to the dryer. That's another few minutes. And a lot of times, these distractions are things that we need to do. But during your focused spiritual discipline time, set them aside and think of nothing else except building your relationship with the Lord. Again, whether you're praying, whether you're reading the Bible, whether you're listening to the Bible, whatever you're doing, Be dedicated to just that. And lastly, ask the Holy Spirit to help. We cannot do this alone. John 14, 16 through 17 says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Later in that chapter, it says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, Whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Mamas, we can't do this without the Holy Spirit. Whether we are just trying to figure out our weekend plans or we're going through a really, really tough, heartbreaking season. We have to invite the Holy Spirit to guide us in all the things. And maybe it feels a little weird to do that, but think about this. How many thoughts do you have a day? And how many of those thoughts lead to emotions, feelings of happiness, anger, frustration, guilt, jealousy? And then how often do those emotions lead to some form of action? Actions that maybe we're not proud of or maybe lead to the feelings of mom guilt. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to guide us multiple times a day in all of our decisions. One thing that's constantly been on my mind is all of the shoulds that a mom feels. Things like, I should cook homemade meals. I should keep my house clean. Uh, I should be involved in my kid's school. I should work. I should stay at home. I should be more patient. I should be more fit. All of these shoulds suck the life out of you, right? It certainly does for me. But when we start filtering every should through the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden a weight will be lifted. We'll know what we actually need to should and what we should should not. (laughs) Now, of course, some are more obvious shoulds, like you should, you know, take care of your body. You should have some degree of of hygiene and cleanliness in your life because that's just healthy. But how the Holy Spirit shepherds you to respond and handle each of those shoulds is going to be the big difference here. 
And it's going to look different for every mom because God designed every mom uniquely. The point is the same. Bring the Holy Spirit into your daily life. And it could be as simple as, Holy Spirit, you are truth. Tell me what is truth here. Holy Spirit, what should I do? Holy Spirit, guide me here. So to recap, in order to shore up your spiritual disciplines, first, tie it to an existing routine. Second, write it in your schedule or set an alarm for it. Third, strive for really focused intention. And last, but most importantly, ask the Holy Spirit to help. All right, that's all I have for today. Stick around next week. I'm going to have Mel Hashi from the Strong Family Project talk about strong family values and how we go about creating them. So hit that follow button on your podcast app, and I'll catch you again next week for a cup of coffee with a side of faith, wisdom, and hope. 